Okay, so let's, uh, let's get started. Hello, everybody. Thanks very much for coming at Google today for this Facebook developer meetup. Uh, my name is Patrick Chanazon. I'm a developer advocate uh, at Google, uh, which is API Evangelist. I've been doing that for two years, first with AdWords, then with Checkout, and right now with Open Social. And that's what I'm going to uh, talk to you about tonight, Open Social. So before, before we get into this slide, I'd like to get a little bit more of an idea of where you stand regarding open social. So who among you have heard about uh, open social before or, or have an idea about what it is? OK, very good. So I, I'll skip tons of slides because I have a very long presentation. We have only 20 minutes to go through it. So I, I'll just skip many of these. Uh, another question, who among you is a professional developer developing applications for a living? Okay, uh, a pretty good number, that's great. Uh, and last question, who among you is, uh, um, ha has some correct uh, JavaScript skills? <laughs> yeah, a little bit less hands, that's what I, uh, that's what I get usually. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> The HTML would count as well. <laughs> so on this slide, uh, w w what you can see is my daughter, Elliot. And um, I asked her, uh, because open social is about making the web social, so what does it mean to be social? So I asked her, what are you doing with your friends? And this is uh, what she got me. She's, she's pretty good at uh, drawing. Yeah, so we help each other. We read together. There are many social applications to share your reading list. We do projects together. The collaboration theme starts to emerge. And um, now, now that we know what it means to be social offline, uh, what does it mean to socialize, to make a social application? And here, on the picture here, uh, the, the guy you see in the middle, here, socializing with his cell phone, with his friends just next to him. Uh, his name is Jerry Engestrom. And uh, he gave an excellent talk. Uh, he's the co-founder of Jaiku. Uh, it's a social application for mobile phones. And this is a talk that he gave a few times, and it's public. So you can take a look at it at the URL below. And in there, he tries to uh, determine five different principles to make a successful social applications. Among these five principles, you have what is your object that you're trying to socialize? And Jerry is coming to it uh, from a, a social scientist background, not an engineering background. Uh, what are the verbs uh, that you can do to these objects? So t talking about objects, for example, Flickr was very su successful because they were trying to socialize pictures. Then what are the verbs that, you're, that, you, can, uh, um, that you can apply to these objects? And among the verbs for a picture, it would be, for example, upload a picture or share a picture. Talking about sharing, how can we you share these objects? All these objects need to have some URLs. Then, what is the gift in the invitation? When you are inviting someone in a social network, why would they join uh, uh, the network? They are already maybe in 10 different social networks. You need to have some kind of gift to give them in the invitation. And the gift can be just looking at a picture. And then the last one, the business model question, uh, are you charging the publisher or the end users? And obviously the answer he gives is uh, uh, the publisher. <laughs> so I, I'm talking about Jerry's talk because for me it was kind of an eye-opener. Five years ago, if you, um, if you wanted to socialize an object, to take something that you're doing offline and socialize it on the web, you would have to create a whole social network create a registration system, uh, create a way to, for people to define who their friends are, eventually have a profile uh, that, the, uh, that these people can fill in, and then they start filling it into very different services. So what happened today is that there are uh, many social networks uh, socializing many different objects, and the big change these days uh, with APIs is that these APIs lower the barrier to entry to socialize these objects. Now you can just leverage 
the social networks that end users have created on, on the big sites, uh, like uh, Facebook or MySpace or Orkut, and bring your application in there, and your application is just focused on socializing the object uh, that, that, you have, that you have picked, and then it can leverage the APIs to take advantage of the social graph of the users. So what we, what we needed in here was for the web to have an, a common infrastructure to, for an application to determine what is the social graph of the user. So open social is really uh, uh, trying to make the web better by making it social, having a common infrastructure for these social applications. So I'll just skip through these slides. Uh, basically, there are tons of social networks. If you're a developer, you want to have access to the activity stream and the profile information uh, of your friends, uh, of the friends of your users. But there are many networks, and if each of them had different APIs, it would be complicated. So open social is a common set of API that uh, many social sites will agree upon. It's a standard. Uh, that lets developers create these social applications. So it's not Google social, it's really open social. There are 18 different partners that were present at our launch and uh, more and more social sites are interested into implementing it. So here you can see the various social networks and uh, they are talking to the same layer of APIs and the developer only has to bother about one layer of API that makes things simpler. So there are many social sites involved in open social, uh, and they are very varied. Uh, as you can take a look at the logos in there, uh, you got some of the mainstream sites like uh, High Five, MySpace, Orkut, but also some professional sites uh, like uh, LinkedIn or Viadeo in France. It's very international, there's Mixi in Japan. And we also have a few enterprise players, Salesforce and Oracle. Uh, doing open social, uh, enabling open social applications into CRM applications. So open social is a standards-based API, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology behind it. Today, open social is mainly a client-side JavaScript API. So in order to write an open social application, you write uh, HTML and JavaScript, the same technologies that web developers are used to, and CSS to style it. Um, and uh, the, the server is optional. What that means is that Open Social includes a persistence API that allows you in JavaScript to store some information about your users so that if you don't have too heavy duty uh, needs in terms of data, you can write just uh, an XML file, put it on the web somewhere, and then the open social container is going to provide the persistence layer for you. So that really lowers the barrier to entry. You don't need to create, uh, uh, to manage your own server, create your own database and, and manage that. Initially, uh, there, there was a, a server-side REST API that was planned. So Google made a proposal to base it on, on the Google Data API, which is a, a flavor of Atom. Uh, but with the various partners, we didn't agree upon the syntax. So it's like um, in the Middle Age, they used, the monks used to have discussions about how many angels you can fit on the tip of a pin. And it's exactly the same kind of discussions we started to have with the various containers. Some of them wanted pure XML. We wanted Atom with namespace data in it. Others wanted JSON. Uh, we said, OK, let's ship the, the JavaScript API first, and we'll take care of that later. So that these discussions will happen in the next two months, I guess. So there are many, many websites uh, involved uh, in open social. The core services that are exposed in uh, an open social container, a, web, a social site that exposes the open social API, are people, who I am, my profile information, my friends, who I know, my, my, my uh, friends list. Uh, then activity stream, when uh, the user is doing something interesting in your application, you may post an entry into an activity stream. And the containers will display this list of activities uh, by the users so that they, these users can share it to their friends. It's very similar to the Facebook newsfeed feature. 
And then there's this persistence API that allows you to write applications without having a server side. So the reason, uh, I, I'm going to give you an update about open social. Uh, but first maybe, um, yeah, maybe before doing that, uh, I'm going to switch to a, a slide that gives a, yeah. When Open Social was introduced uh, in uh, November 1st, uh, we went through the, uh, w what Gartner calls the, the technology hype cycle. So th this is a, a, a curve that Gartner created where a technology trigger generates a lot of excitation and uh, people have very inflated expectations about it. It's going to cure uh, world hunger and all that. So that's what they call the peak of inflated expectations. Then very fast you go down to the trough of disillusionment. And then the, the slope of enlightenment leads to a plateau of productivity where this technology becomes mainstream and everybody's using it. So I, I kind of drafted a timeline of the open social hype cycle. Uh, and we went through this cycle. It's really, uh, it's too bad. I, I, I can see the, okay. So I have some dates in there. Basically, we went through this whole cycle in three months. That's November, that's December, that's January. And now I think we're here uh, with MySpace shipping their developer platform uh, last week. So what happened is that we shipped a 0 0.5 version of Open Social that was really only for developers because we wanted feedback. When you create a standard, you want feedback about it uh, from developers. You don't invent in a void. So 0 0.5 didn't, have, didn't define many of the mechanisms that you would need for production applications, especially in the security area. Uh, so we had this campfire event, and the night of the campfire, Orkut shipped live with a sandbox for developers. So you needed to be whitelisted, and you needed to be a developer to access it. We didn't want uh, consumers uh, to get into that. It was really for developers to test their apps. Very quickly, Ning and Plaxo, I think the next week or, or even the next day, uh, shipped their sandboxes and uh, high five the week after. And then uh, Brian McAllister from High Five proposed let's have a reference implementation of an open social server doing all the, um, uh, all the plumbing for the API, for exposing the API on your social site as an Apache project. So, the, so he proposed the Shindig project to the Apache Software Foundation. And at Google, we were really bullish about this. So we talked about it to Eric Schmidt, and he told us, if you're going to do uh, an open social reference implementation, you're going to give them all the code that we're running in production for Orkut. So we decided to do that. Shindig was ac accepted by the Apache Foundation and then started uh, in December and Googlers started committing uh, the Orkut code in there. At the same time, we had many meetings with the container partners that were present in the beginning to flesh out the spec and add some details to it, uh, especially the security, but also many things that were missing from the first spec. And it's at that time, I, I call that the trough of disillusionment because there were many articles in December, hey, Google is not doing anything with this, uh, there are no live containers. Sure, we were just working to make the spec a little bit more solid. 0 0.6 was a big uh, milestone. There were tons of changes in it and lots of new features, and it shipped uh, sometimes in December. And then there's, uh, we went to this, uh, uh, to this slope, um, uh, to the slope of enlightenment during the month of January where we had more meetings and we arrived at a 0 0.7 spec that's kind of uh, ready for production. And that was announced, uh, if I remember, I think it's two or three weeks ago, so it's pretty recent. And last week, Orkut and MySpace shipped a sandbox that you can use for the 0 0.7 version. What that means is that the, the shipping of Orkut and MySpace for, for consumers uh, is really near. It's in the next month or, or so. And, um, and so what that means for applications and developers who want to create open social application, this is the right time now to get started and get on board with open social. So I'm going to go uh, 
yeah, real quickly over the changes that happen in the specs. Um, so from 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. Uh, in, um, in 0 0.6, we added an environment uh, uh, JavaScript object that you can query to get a little bit more ideas about what the container you're running on enables. So you can ask whether a certain function is available in that container with the has capability. Uh, the support fields, um, you can check whether a specific field is available in the user profile. And also the get domain function, which uh, gives you uh, the domain where you're running right now, where your application is running. For navigation, in order to navigate between the various surfaces, uh, between the, the profile page and the canvas page, uh, there are some, um, uh, some APIs to do that as well. There are some better permission mechanisms as well. And the, the big thing, the big change was this make request method that allows you uh, to do some AJAX request from your open social application back to your server in a signed and authenticated way. So that was a big change. So activity stream API from 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 was much simplified. Some of the notions of 0 0.5 were completely removed. Um, so profile, uh, we define basic and full profiles. And 0 0.7 was really built in a very collaborative manner. Uh, uh, during the 0 0.6 time frame, we opened a wiki on the Google group, and uh, people could uh, just look at our priority list and make some suggestions uh, about what they needed. And then we prioritized all that, and we created this 0 0.7 uh, specification based on that. One of the big change in uh, 0 0.7 is that Open Social is initially based on the Google Gadgets API. And uh, gadgets were not open source, it was a Google technology. And when we shipped 0 0.5, we just wanted to get out of the door. In 0 0.7, there was some cleaning up of namespaces. So we separated out the gadget spec and the open social spec. So open social only takes care of what is social, and gadget takes care of the uh, the kind of mechanics that you need for your gadget to run and uh, in order to make outside calls and things like that. So there are two namespaces in JavaScript now, open social and gadgets. Um, yeah, so some function changed. Uh, also, there has been some, uh, a lot of feedback from the developer community that there was not enough mechanism in the initial spec to make your application viral. And for social applications, this is very important. So Open Social 0 0.7 introduced two methods, request share app and request send message that allows you to make your application more viral. Uh, user's authorization is always asked before sending these messages out. There's a bunch of uh, standardized uh, person fields also that have been added in 0 0.7. And uh, when you look at it, it's like of a grab bag of uh, a lot of things that you can see in profile pages in the various sites. Containers are not mandated to uh, implement them all. Uh, but then you have this, um, um, this mechanism that lets you ask the container, which kind of fields do you support? Uh, actually, in addition to the, uh, to the fields, uh, to the standard fields that were added in the API, there's also a namespacing mechanism that allows for extensibility that would be container specific. So for example, MySpace could have a bunch of fields that are MySpace specific and that would be namespaced by the URL. So it allows for really uh, growing, the, um, growing the profile deeper. Uh, if you take a look at the video uh, that was made at the campfire event, there's a very good uh, example of MySpace adding, they, they have this movie, favorite movies film, uh, favorite movies uh, field in their profile, and the Flickster uh, movie rating application took advantage of that to pre-fill the list of movies that you had when they were running on MySpace. So now in 0 0.7, there's a very well-defined mechanism to do that kind of extension 
uh, in, uh, in your container implementation. Yeah, so, so there are a bunch of styles also to allow gadgets to match the container. Whether uh, an application wants to match the container look and feel or not is really uh, left as a choice to the developer. Activities template, uh, it's a way to avoid or, or to allow the container to gather activities together. When you're getting, um, um, when you're getting some, um, uh, for example, if I, if I post a picture and then an hour later I post a picture again uh, using my mobile phone, for example, on a social network, my, um, my friends are not interested in seeing 10 different messages in there. They'd like to see one message. Patrick has posted a bunch of pictures with maybe a few thumbnails. So these activity templates, when you're using the, uh, the um, activity stream API, allows you to say, oh, this is, this is what the notification looks like, and I'm going to fill it with these data. And then at the container level, the container is then able to do some uh, uh, gathering together of these activity messages to avoid uh, uh, information overload. Yeah, the data API have been simplified as well in 0.7. There are, uh, an, another aspect is that um, in uh, 0.5 there was, in the initial gadget API, the gadget API is a little, uh, the, a gadget is a, a little XML file that have a bunch of sections and there's a content section and it's unique. For open social application you want to have a profile markup and maybe some markup for a canvas page. So now the new gadget API allows you to have these various sections. And there are uh, a little bit of a few utilities, uh, like a built-in JSON support, some utilities to deal with JSON, serialize and deserialize from JSON. There are a few things that have been deferred to 0 0.8, uh, but they were deemed uh, not mandatory for shipping. So 0 0.7 is really the version that's going to ship in MySpace and Orkut. Uh, for example, the things that were discussed is uh, a built-in support for top friends, uh, which was one of the very famous Facebook applications. Uh, types for data API, for data API. Um, um, yeah, some common UI components uh, like you have in FBML, for example. Uh, so things like that, there are a bunch of things that are pushed back to 0 0.8 and they will be uh, rolled into 0 0.8 and then shipped into the various containers. So I'm going to, wow, well, we have a very short time. Okay, couple minutes. So I'm just going to show you an example. And, uh, uh, hmm of uh, an open, open social application running on uh, the Orkut sandbox. So there's a very nice uh, tutorial. So first I, I want to tell you about this site. There's an open source project where we ship all our sample code and you can run the gadgets from there. And in there they have a wiki with a lot of resources for developers. And it will be in the resource section of my presentation which will be published on my blog uh, tomorrow. So I, I really recommend this, uh, this page. Then this is an example of, um, of a very simple open social application that lists your friends. And what I wanted to do was uh, just to show you what the code looks like. Um, Yeah, so this is, a, this is an open social application. As you see, it's a, it's a gadget with a module section. Uh, then here, here you have the require feature equal open social 0 0.7 where you, you specify the version of the API you want to play with. And then you have a content section which is just HTML and JavaScript. So this is the, the kind of JavaScript that, um, that, that we're using here. Um, an example would be, for example, this one, load friends, to load the list of friends. You're creating this uh, data request object. 
And here you can stuff many typed requests, like you want the list of friends, you want some profile information, you want to update some things. So you prepare all these requests, and when you're finished with it, uh, you just do a request send. So that, because all this stuff happens asynchronously, it's better to, to load it uh, in a batch mode. So here, this is a type of a type request where I ask for the viewer information, a fetch person request, and the fetch people request ask for the list of friends. And then what I receive back from it is a hash map of results that are keyed by the second parameter that I put here in the request add. And then I can do a lookup of this uh, viewer or viewer friends and I get a result object which represent, which is a JavaScript object representing a person or a profile or a list of friends and I can iterate through them, add them to the UI and all that. So that's how this list is done. I, I recommend you to go through the tutorial. Uh, it's uh, very detailed and it's a very good way to get started. And the awkward sandbox as well as the MySpace uh, sandbox are available for that. So uh, just two things before we finish. Um, one technology that's part of uh, open social, but that's not mandatory. It's recommended for containers to use it, but not mandated. Orkut and, and MySpace are going to use it. It is called Kaha, and it's a JavaScript sanitizer. So it, it, when, you, when your JavaScript will go through that, it will be rewritten, and all the unsafe constructs will be removed from it. Uh, another aspect of open social is Shindig, this open source project. Uh, Google, is very, Google engineers are very active, committing a lot of code in there. And it should make it super easy for containers to integrate open social, to support open social in their, um, in their social site. So Shindig is not finished. I hope it will be finished by next month. So the conclusion is that for open social is kind of ready for production. It's going to go soon live uh, for consumers. So if you have an idea of an application to build, now is the right time to get started. Uh, and for, for uh, containers, uh, just monitor the Shindig project and, uh, and, and go for it when it's ready. And there are a bunch of resources for here for uh, developers. Yeah, and yeah, making open social was a very social undertaking. There were many companies involved in doing that, and uh, we had a lot of fun. <laughs> We helped each other a lot. This is the hackathon with MySpace when building their container. And uh, that's it. But when we are mad, it never finishes well. And uh, anyone can be friends. <laughs> so if you're a container, if you're a social site and you want to implement open social, it's good for everybody. Thanks very much. Do you have any questions? Or maybe or I'll be in the area out there for questions because I need to leave the spot here. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs>